So we're going to start tonight with the uh, salmon souffle crepes. That's going to be our first recipe. All of you have a copy. And so let's get started. Um, there are There is what's called whole eggs, which you can get in the number 10 can. And there's another product called egg mix. Egg mix, when you mix with water, you can make a scrambled egg, an omelet, okay, uh, fried rice with scrambled egg, you know, that kind of thing. Whole egg, you cannot. A whole egg you use whenever it calls for an egg in a recipe. It will not fry, will not saute. That's the difference, and you need to know that. What's also interesting is you can take the egg mix and mix a little bit of whole egg with it to stretch it, and it'll fry it up. But you can't fry it just whole egg mix, okay? So starting with our recipe, and um, my show proves that you don't have to be a connoisseur and great chef and have all these things memorized like they do on the cooking channel. This is uh, to show that even men can do this, okay? So I read the recipe right along with you and do it right along with you. We start with four eggs, and uh, it says separate one egg and set aside, so we're going to start with three. With, with powdered eggs, uh, it's uh, one tablespoon of egg powder to one tablespoon of water. <clears throat> so um, what I do is scrape it off nice and even. There's one. There's two. There's three. Now we do three tablespoons of water. And we mix that up, and we have our three eggs as we crack them out of the shell. Okay? Now we have uh, next is a half a cup of milk and, uh, excuse me, half a cup of sour cream. So I have powdered sour cream and I mixed it before you came. And all these cans on the side tell you how to mix them, you know, like this much water to this much dry stuff. And what I do is I write on top of the lid one egg, one tablespoon of water, for instance. So I have to keep reading the small print every single time I cook with it, you know. Makes it convenient and more user friendly to uh, use your food storage. Nice thing about what we're doing is uh, we can edit out a lot of stuff, but it takes forever to get started coming out of a bowl or something like that. Just edit that right out. Now we're going to mix in our salmon and our breadcrumbs. Now, salmon is a great food storage item. You know, those canned salmon. And I have a couple cases in my food storage. And um, a lot of people think about or like to pick out the bones, which you don't, they don't get stuck in your teeth or they're not hard. They dissolve in your mouth and you chew them. And for your benefit, I did that. I picked out the bones. But in my home, I don't do that because uh, the body recognizes the bones and uses the calcium and helps recalcify your bone structure. So it's good for you, but we're so used to take the bone out of the roast and take the bone out of the chickens, all the skinless chicken breasts, and, and when we have one of the highest rates of uh, osteoporosis in the world. So uh, don't be afraid to leave your bones in your salmon. Now if it was a fresh salmon, I'd pull bones out, you know. But a canned salmon is just not the same. Okay, on breadcrumbs, it's uh, half a cup. And by the way, in case you don't know, this is what you know, our canned salmon looks like. And if you're, you know, I teach people when you're draining vegetables like green beans, corn, pour the water into your soup stock or use it to mix uh, one cup of water to one powdered gravy mix packet, you know. Don't throw your water down the drain. What about water and salmon? You know, you're not really going to drink it, and you're not really going to use it in a soup stock, so what could you use it for? Anybody know? Homemade clam chowder soup, you know, with clams. Just use a little extra water because it's going to call for seven or eight cups of water for clam chowder, okay? All right.
Now there is dehydrated celery, and I've got that in a bowl that I put in water earlier, so it dehydrated by now. So this water that's in the celery we would drain into our soup stock, not our, our, sleep, our sink. Okay. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> What's interesting about powdered celery, when you, not powdered, but dehydrated, it's actually flash freeze dried. When you rehydrate it, it has that crunch that fresh celery does. It's really good. Is that something you did? Dehydrate? I mean, did you hydrate your celery? No, you could, but it's cheaper and less time consuming and smarter just to buy it in the tin can. Because it's, um, you know, you have to uh, do it yourself. So here's the celery, okay? All right. Now the onion and lemon juice and parsley. Once again, a rehydrated onion. A lot of things, one of the things a lot of people don't know about onion is that if I were to put in um, a quarter cup in here and then water, it would expand to half a cup. So I put in an eighth of a cup and expand it to a quarter cup. You're going to be stuck with a lot of onions if you don't know that. Write it on your lid on your number 10 can. Okay. Let's get a little bit closer here. So, uh, as I say many times in the show, you know, I have the convenience of a stove and an oven, which you're not going to have in making something like this. So you need to have some kind of a cooking device to uh, make this with. I'm doing a show on the volcano stove, for instance, that does charcoal or wood or anything that burns. It's almost like a pate on uh, something you can mix with. Um, I like to make salmon balls in the plant, which I absolutely love. Okay, and parsley, it's um, Two tablespoons. So. We're going to do one because this is dehydrated, you know. If it's fresh parsley, then you chop it up and do two. Some recipes I'll put in all the dry ingredients and mix them, you know, and all the wet. Another ball, mix them, and then put the two together because you get a better mix. But with this, this is really, I think, the best way of doing it. You know, when there is really no dry ingredients; they're all wet. Okay, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. The salt I recommend is either sea salt or real salt because they have all the vitamins and minerals still in the salt. So you don't have to worry about a salt-free diet, high blood pressure because of the vitamins and minerals. That not vitamins, the minerals that your body needs. I'm not a big pepper fan, but I'm going to put a little bit in because I'm sure a lot of people don't like pepper in their food. I like uh, the freshly ground and twist and use that for cooking, and then I, you know, I can't get enough of that. It's your powdered pepper that you get. Okay, that will cut for a second. Because our timer went off, and that means that other dish is ready, so I'm going to burn. Now, uh, a lot of people wouldn't think this, but your mayonnaise and your Miracle Whip, great items for food storage, they're going to last a year, two or three, easily, until you start opening them and then you use them up in, let's say, three to four months. So, I have uh, mayonnaise in my food storage, lots of bottles and Miracle Whip and mustard and ketchup. I'm used to eating, as are many of you, I'm sure. Another thing that's really good um, that can stretch your cooking oil 
that you might have in your food storage, whether it be um, vegetable oil or sapphire oil, canola oil, or olive oil, is uh, these spray cans that have butter flavored ice, my preference, when you get regular. And that'll really stretch your oil when you're frying in a frying pan or something, sauteing something, that kind of thing. And then one of my shows, uh, I, like I said earlier, I show you how to make dairy, butter, and bottles on your food storage without refrigeration in the last seven, eight years. So whenever I cook, I use real butter. I don't use the powdered butter because in my opinion, it has an absolutely hideous aftertaste that you can't mask or hide. A lot of people don't know that and they have three or four number 10 cans and we have to choke it down. Okay, uh, some mustard, one tablespoon. It says prepared mustard. This is the same thing as prepared mustard, isn't it? Or no? Okay, then I want to go about a quarter of a tablespoon. Seven man, I don't know if everything in there. Just put a little bit in there. I guess your French is mustard. Let me use what you can have in your food storage. Just put a little bit. It gives a little bit of bite in the back of the taste buds of the tongue, which is really enjoyable. And when you're in an emergency situation, to be able to serve food like this is quite wonderful. It's a really emotional uplift. And the last thing is a teaspoon of dill weed. When you're having spices, which you should have lots of spices in your food storage, which is something most people don't think of, um, the best place to buy them, is, a lot of them, not all of them, is at the dollar store. The onion powder, garlic powder, parsley flakes, sesame seeds, rosemary, are some of the things I personally purchased um, at the dollar store for a dollar a bottle, and that really stretches your food storage. How long do they last? Um, because they're in the original seal, they'll last a year and a half, two years, easily, if not longer. Being, you know, things last depending on how you store them. You know, you put them on the, the windowsill in the sunlight, they're not going to last very long. We're out in a storeroom with no insulation in the backyard. Whereas put them in your pantry, they'll last, uh, let's say, three to five years. Or in my case, I have a three walled cement, eight inches all the way around with the door going in, with holes I drill on each end. And um, food storage will last uh, 10 to 15 years because it's a little bit refrigerated. It's cold year round and really cold in the winter time. So the coldness really extends the life of your of all your food storage products. And when you see the side of the can, it says seven dash 10 years, seven to 10 years. The reason it says that is because it isn't how you store it. You know where you store it. So the better, colder situation you can store something, the uh, longer it'll last. And um, in the Bible Belt, where I come from, down in Texas and Louisiana and that area, um, based on scriptures, people have 10 and 15 year food supplies right now, today, not one year. So they uh, put this culture to shame when it comes to food storage. All right, so we've got all of our ingredients together. Now, on the crates, um, it's kind of kind of like a pancake recipe, which I've got above three eggs, half cup of milk, half cup of water, three tablespoons of butter, and I'm talking about real butter, which you melt, and uh, you can use a solar oven to melt that without using any fuel, which will extend your fuel, by the way. Three quarters cup of flour and a half teaspoon of salt. And I say that because we're going to show the recipe on the screen while I'm talking. Okay. Um, then you just take your butter flavored Spray, spray in your frying pan, and uh, pour just a little bit, go like this to flatten it out, and you have your crepes, which I made earlier. Okay. So, what we're going to do is take a break and I'm going to put off this table so I can work here. Let's put a little hot dog tube like on there and we're going to roll them. Can you, you guys have a camera? Can you see this or is yeah, there on the stove? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and check the camera angle. I used uh, white flour for these particular crepes. You can use wheat flour. 
or as my show will teach you, uh, six different grains you, you grind together that have a synergistic effect. They're really delicious together and really good for you. So depending on how many in your family, just determines how many craves you make. Thanks.